We all know that calories in and calories out is gonna determine your weight loss or weight gain. All right, everyone knows that, but it's not that simple. All right, this doesn't take into account how different types of foods affect these two variables. What I mean is there are certain foods that help you feel fueled up and more full, right? And these foods will help you have more energy to burn more calories. They will also minimize the chances of you overeating. We call these nutrient dense foods, okay? There are other types of foods that don't fuel you up and they're just gonna leave you wanting more and more. We call these calorie dense foods. So I'm gonna give you examples of three easy choices or swaps that you can make in your diet to account for these variables and lose fat faster. And then I'm gonna give you an example meal plan to put all of this into practice. All right, so let's dive into it. So swap number one is gonna be highly processed foods for less processed foods, okay? Examples are replacing white bread for whole grain bread or sugary cereals for oatmeal, right? The benefits that you're gonna see by doing this is keep yourself feeling fuller longer. You're gonna provide yourself with more nutrients and energy, and you're also gonna have more thermal effect of food, which allows you to burn more calories simply from digesting the food. The thermal effect of food is how many calories you burn by digesting the food. And just by making this swap, less processed foods is gonna allow you to burn more calories just by digesting that food. Okay, studies have shown that 50% less thermic effect of food um, from highly processed foods, you know, consisting of the same amount of calories compared to unprocessed foods. So in other words, you know, if you had two sandwiches, they were both 800 calories, but one sandwich was made with whole grain bread and real cheese. And the other sandwich is made of like white bread and really processed cheese. Then the whole grain bread and the real cheese, you're actually going to burn more calories just by digesting that food up to 50% more. So other studies have shown that with all other variables being controlled, that swapping out processed foods for less processed foods can equate to a hundred extra calories burned throughout the day. All right. So that's like the equivalent of the amount of calories that you burn by running a mile. Okay. So that, that can really add up throughout the week. So this means you could literally have the same amount of calories in, but your calories out will increase on autopilot basically by making this swap. All right, so that's swap number one, you know, replacing your processed foods with less processed foods. All right, so swap number two is going to be starting to do intermittent fasting. All right, so I've talked about it before, but nutrient timing doesn't matter all that much when it comes to, you know, how many calories you're burning and how much fat you're burning throughout the day. But I found that it does help a lot when it comes to adhering to the diet, right? Especially if you're in a significant calorie deficit. For myself and many of my clients that I've worked with, restricting the, the eating window has made it a lot easier to hit the calorie goals and lose fat with more ease. I actually wrote a research paper in college on intermittent fasting because I found it very beneficial for my own life. All right, not only has it helped me reach my fat loss goals, you know, when I've been dieting down, but is it's also changed my relationship with food for the better. All right, when you when you don't eat during your fasting periods, you start to develop a different relationship with food. Kind of realize you don't need it as much. I also have more focus in the morning when I'm fasted and I've got some black coffee in me. It's kind of when I'm the most productive throughout the day. But there's a couple of caveats that I would say with intermittent fasting that I want you to take into consideration. Don't go too long in your fasting window. All right, I found that an eight to 10 hour eating window works best. All right, longer fasts can actually end up affecting your hormones and even lead to more binging due to hunger. So that's one thing to take into consideration. Also pay attention to fueling your workouts, All right? One of, the, one of the main cons that I found when doing research for my research paper on this in, in college was, and fasting in general can affect your performance when you're in that fasted state, right? So take that into consideration. And if you can control it, right? If you can control your schedule, then try to train during your eating window <clears throat> to make sure that you're fueled up before and after your workouts and you're recovering from those workouts. But like I said, fasting can definitely make it easier to stick to your diet when you're in a significant deficit by just helping you feel full while you're eating and then just take advantage of restricting that eating window to, to be able to eat less calories throughout the day. Okay, so that, that's swap number two. And then swap number three is choosing satiating foods, 
right? Choosing foods that are actually going to help you feel more full, right? So there are some foods that help you feel more full for longer, right? Not, not only processed versus unprocessed, but there's other foods that are just inherently more satiating. Protein, for example, is the most satiating macronutrient, all right? So out of protein, carbs, and fats, protein is the macronutrient that's going to help you feel full the longest, all right? So this is another reason why you should really prioritize protein as your main macro, all right? Pay attention to the calories, but the, the macronutrient that I find most important is protein, um, you know, this being one of the main reasons. I've had feedback from a lot of my clients that just by switching to a high protein diet, it's helped them feel a lot more full even when their calories are lower than they were before, right? So even when they're eating less calories overall, by switching to a more high protein diet, they, they stay full and satiated longer. But even eating different foods with the same macro and calorie profile can make a difference with this as well. For example, potatoes are more satiating than rice, all right? So you could stay fuller longer by eating potatoes over rice. If you know, you know, if you're someone that eats a lot of rice, by switching over to potatoes, you may start feeling more full and, and less hungry throughout the day. All right. And another example is oats are inherently more satiating than whole grain bread. So same thing there. All right. And there's a whole list of these. Um, it's called the the satiety index, um, and it kind of ranks different uh, foods to to how satiating they are right based off of studies like actual research just like the timing of your meals can affect adherence so can eating foods that keep you feeling full for longer right obviously it's easier to stick to a diet um, if you're feeling more full right so if you're eating foods that that are just inherently more satiating that's going to allow you to stick to the diet and feel full and, and adhere to it so now let's put all this together right so let's let's kind of put a sample meal plan together of course, your, your portions are going to vary depending on um, your starting point, your gender and your weight and your experience level and your goals. Um, but I'm going to make it super simple. So we're going to break your fast around 10 or 11 a.m. That's typically when I break my fast with oatmeal, one whole egg and a cup of egg whites. All right. This is just an example breakfast for you, right? The oatmeal is very satiating, good nutrient dense carb, complex carb. Uh, you're going to get good fats from the whole egg, but we're going to make it a little bit less fatty with, with the egg whites for the rest of it. Um, this is going to help you feel fueled up and it's going to help you feel satiated for, for most of your day. Then we're going to eat again early afternoon. And what your basically your lunch is going to be is going to be sweet potatoes and either chicken breast or lean ground turkey. All right. So you're going to get a good lean protein source and the sweet potatoes, very satiating other complex carbs. There's also good vitamins in sweet potatoes, vitamin A. Um, so that, that's going to be a good lunch for you. And then have an apple or a banana, you know, some sort of small fruit or snack like that um, before your workout, if you're working out in the evening and then have a protein shake after your workout. All right. Again, we want to try to like have these kind of strategic snacks since those are probably your most spread out meals between that lunch and your dinner you know, just fuel you up around that workout and help recover afterwards. Dinner should be after your workout, maybe around 7 p.m. It could be whole grain pasta with lean ground beef meat sauce. So this is gonna give you a nice, still lean, you know, try to go for like a 94.6 lean ground beef. And it's gonna be a nice lean protein source. And then believe it or not, like whole grain pasta is actually very satiating. Of course, you know, the biggest factor, and that's basically your example day right there, just to, to lay that out for you. Um, with everything put together. But you know, the biggest factor in losing your weight, like I said, is sticking to a calorie deficit, but use all of these principles um, to make that process as easy and effective as possible on yourself. So if you'd like more of a comprehensive guide when it comes to meal planning, then message me fat loss on Instagram. But I hope this video was helpful for you. If you liked the video, then like the damn video subscribe for more personal development content like this. And I'll see you guys in the next video. But in the meantime, elevate every damn day. Peace. Elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.